Unguambulus, a sleepy community near Sabon Tasha area of Chikun local government, is on the outskirts of Kaduna metropolis. At about 8 p.m. on Thursday, bandits in large numbers invaded the community, shooting sporadically to scare the residents. And in the process, they shot and killed two people while they abducted an unspecified number of persons. Among the kidnapped victims is a woman and her four children who were forced out of their home while they were having their dinner. Residents say the bandits operated for about two hours without any resistance. Since I know my daughter is living here in Angwambulus, I try, I called her number. It was ringing, but she was not picking. So that was when my husband said, okay, let him go down to Angwambulus to see exactly what is happening. And that was around after 10 to 11. So when he came, he saw her door wide open. And uh, the food that we are eating was there on the, on the floor and all the uh, things we are scattered. So he gathered everything. In fact, she even plucked water on, uh, she plucked water for, to bath. And when they took her, she left the water, the heater, and the water was boiling. It was when my husband came that he off the litter. When we are hiding, then I saw, uh, we are just hiding for back here. Then some people among them enter here. When they enter here, they are, uh, Somebody is asking somebody that, ah, how many people there for this house? I said, ah, my house again, they are asking. Means, is it there is someone that, I said, God, I cannot conclude it, but let your will be done. As it stands, the whereabouts of those kidnapped is yet unknown, but the latest attack has again thrown the community into fear. Many of the residents gather in groups to mourn the killing and abduction of their loved ones, while calling on the government to improve security in the area. We are just waiting for the government to come to our rescue to help us because this is not local Cardinal State we know. The Cardinal we know is a peaceful land. This thing like it don't, don't happen. But we know that this is not beyond government. They can still do something, they can still see us too. Kidnapping for ransom is becoming a recurring decimal in Kaduna State. People are being abducted by bandits from their homes, farms and even roads. And this has consequently led to the residents living in perpetual fear and helplessness. security continues to hug the headlines and major reports for all the wrong reasons and uh, this is not just happening in the northern parts of the country whether north central northwest or northeast we've had cases as well in the southern part uh, of the country in Eboni state in Anambra and some other you know pockets of attacks and violence and you know it gets to a point where people begin to ask what else are we missing what else can we do or what more uh, can we do and these are the questions that we'll be putting out this morning after all we can't give up on these issues and we're joined on the program this morning to do justice uh, to those issues by colonel yomi Dari, former army officer he joins us live in our lego studio good morning colonel good morning and joining us virtually is Mr. Adam Zabu, former Assistant Director, Internal Security at the SSS. Uh, is a fellow International Institute of Professional Security and Security and Intelligence Consultant. He joins us via Zoom from Akure this morning. Uh, good morning, uh, Mr. Abu. It's great to have you on the program as well. Good morning. It's my pleasure to be with you this morning. Thank you. Well, the, the issues are not pleasant, really. And uh, I'd like to begin with uh, Colonel Darry in our studio. I, I know from time to time, within your circles of intelligence experts, security consultants, uh, former army you know, officers, you have conversations. We've seen these incidents across the country, not just focused on one part. And it would seem that when these stories come out, we seem to be playing catch-up. And we start rallying together to maybe go after them or try to rescue the people kidnapped. But within your circles, uh, what do you make of the general security architecture, the security approach in Nigeria as of today? Thank you very much, uh, 
Coyote and uh, Ayo uh, for having me on board and um, I salute Nigerians and uh, <laughs> my heart really goes to those who have suffered uh, either directly or indirectly in this latest uh, one, especially uh, the uh, railway incident, you know, between uh, Abuja and Kaduna. Well, I'm happy that uh, as, as it stands, <laughs> Almost uh, every one of us now are involved that we are getting more conscious, more aware of our security. Because like he said, security is everybody's business. Nobody can claim monopoly of knowledge when it comes to security. And uh, lately, when I even listened to some analysis, I became wow that yes, <laughs> it's high time that um, we all you know, uh, take the bull by the horn. Uh, it's, it's, it's very embarrassing what we are facing right now, you know. I mean, a country uh, like Nigeria, uh, the most uh, popular country in black Africa, with all the human and natural resources that we have. And that at this point in time, at this 21st century, we should, you know, be experiencing this. Um, as far as I'm concerned, it, it, it's, it's, it's high time that we just really uh, come to face the reality that we have faced. In, in is, is it that we've not faced the reality? I, I think I, it's staring us in the face quite I, clearly. I, I don't think we have faced the reality. As we, you mean uh, government, people, or cross-section? The, the cross-section, the government and the people, okay? We should right now start holding our leaders accountable. It is high time we have people honorably resigning their appointments when they cannot deliver. That is the truth. I listened to one of the governors when he made his analysis, and I do buy into that. Because this affects all of us across, across the spectrum. In fairness to the armed forces, we know the armed forces by number. And of course, we are aware of the resources that we have. We are aware of the, of the amount of money that has been allocated. And the big question is, are these money really channeled towards what they are meant for? So there's need for accountability. Are the forces getting the motivation they really deserve and desire? Okay? We look at the situation where we know, just like, I mean, it's a common knowledge that the governor came on here to say we know where those people are. We hear them. So what is left for us to do? Whose job is it to do the needful? To do the needful? Yes. It behoves on both the government and the people. The, the constitution is clear okay. about whose job it is to protect lives and property. To protect lives and property. The I constitution think... is very clear on that. Well, excuse no me. No ambiguity. No, excuse me, Ayo. So we are here. Let's lay it bare. Who does the constitution, you know, give that responsibility to? And who is in charge <clears throat> of directing I asked that question, maybe I should ask uh, uh, Mr. Abe, because I asked that question against the backdrop of you know, what you said when you said that um, the, the security, the work of security is the responsibility of everyone. Yes. And I agree with you to an extent. Yes. But Mr. Abe, um, the constitution is clear on whose job it is to protect lives and property. And uh, Colonel Dari here is saying that it is our mutual responsibility and we all agree but someone needs to take the lead which is the government it is clear that it is the job of government to protect lives and property in a situation where we have what we have on our hands what then do we say well thank you very much i think uh, what, what i want to say first is uh, the situation in our hands I want to refer to it as what I'll call um, uh, 
security deficits. This country has been in security deficit over the years. Security deficit in terms of uh, capacity, in terms of personnel, in terms of infrastructure, in terms of uh, um, uh, even citizen participation uh, in security, and in terms of uh, governmental uh, uh, roles in providing security for the country. Like you said, yeah, by law and by the constitution of this country, the federal government has uh, the sole responsibility of uh, ensuring adequate security for the citizenry. But is that is that is that even feasible? Is that uh, something that is uh, practicable? I mean, living under other uh, levels of government uh, out of uh, uh, security provision, and this has led us to somewhat deficit, like I said before. And that is why we are where we are. Uh, if you look at it today, uh, we have, I mean, I advocated for this over time. What is the total uh, number of security personnel in this country over the years? I, and ever since we have been facing these security challenges, uh, there have been uh, cries for increase in personnel, increase in, in uh, infrastructure, increase, I mean, particularly uh, equipment and technology. And uh, the, another funny thing you will even discover is that you will see people who have no business in security uh, taking responsibility for security issues. If you look at the issue of the Minister of uh, Transportation, he was talking about the equipment that he sent, uh, he sent uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 memo to the, to the Federal Executive Council. For goodness sake, I read too, uh, after his, uh, his, his statement, that uh, this is a company that has not been tested anywhere. This is equipment that has, uh, that they, they claim, the technology that has not been known to be tested anywhere. We don't even know the country of manufacture. We don't know where, where, uh, uh, whether it has been used elsewhere and things like that. So we have had this over the years, and this is why we have a uh, security deficit. If you look at the, the last uh, administration's uh, security uh, contract, uh, 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 I, I read in particular, of a young man, they claim to be from Niger Republic. I was given a security contract, I mean, contract to provide security equipment for this country that cannot be found up to today. I mean, what are we talking about? We are in deficit in everywhere. And so I am not surprised that we Please are where say, we are. Because my, we are my apologies, sir. Right. Uh, are not, are just one second, right. Mr. Abu. Just one second. When you say we're in security deficit, I'm wondering um, yeah. the basis. Um, security is about one of the most funded, if not the most funded, you know, uh, in terms of the budget over the years. I mean, it always mm -hmm. comes, most of the time it comes tops, at least among the top tiers of the yeah. of sectors that are most funded mm -hmm. in the organization. And, yeah. you know, a number of mm -hmm. people are still asking the questions. We, have, we don't even know how, how this money is spent. So when you say we are in deficit, is it in terms of funding, resourcing, personnel, equipment, especially, is exactly what is the deficit? Thank you very much. The deficits are, for instance, you provide so much money for security. If, if, if there was no change of government in the last administration, do you think we would have known that uh, the money made for security improvements, arms and ammunition uh, have been spent anyhow, you wouldn't have known. So we are in deficit even in security budget implementation. We are in deficit of providing adequate, I mean, uh, uh, technology for our security personnel. We are in deficit of providing enough personnel. Whether we like it or not, this country is at war. It's not only in the south, it's uh, northeast, northwest, north central. In, in, in the in the in the south south, I mean, you know what is going on in the southeast. We know what the policemen are being killed, the soldiers are being killed on a daily basis. Is that not war? In the southwest, for instance, the 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 the, the, the Yahoo Plus guys, ritual killings are on a daily basis. So we are at war, and when you are at war, what do you do? There should be mass mobilization in terms of personnel recruitment. There must be mass provision of uh, uh, technology provision. There must you know, be mass. Just... In fact, I expected that by now, especially uh, the kinetic aspects, that uh, we should have even called in uh, some 
very active retired military personnel that can be of use to this country because the way we are going the bandits or the terrorists as we call them now they are on the entries on a daily basis and well, we are not uh, having identified uh, having yeah. identified some of these deficits would you also say there's a deficit uh, before i come to lagos uh, would you say there's a deficit in intelligence being an area you're vast in would you say there's an intelligence rather Thank deficit you, in intelligence? the area that we are in deficit in intelligence is for me is in the area of technology to assist uh, i mean uh, uh, security operators and uh, intelligence officers in procuring intelligence let me give you a typical example when we are talking about tracking for instance now how many security formations um i want to use the police as a typical example why the, why should there be no tracking equipment at the divisional level area command level in most cases when they have need to track they come to the headquarters these things should be at every level because the thing is on the increase that is deficit that is the kind of deficit i'm talking about when let me let me come back to the super cup when the super cup was performing excellent I mean, Nigerians were uh, praising him. Why do you think they were praising him? Why was, do you think he was performing? Because he had the adequate training and he also had equipment. Why can those equipment and those training not go down the level of the various formations for us to operate? When you say, if you meet an average policeman on the street in advanced country, he, everything he needed to know about who you are is with him. It's a question of pressing button. Are we not supposed to be at that level? The kind of the kind of forest we are saying that the people have taken over our forest. Are we not supposed to have technology now that will be reporting the forest to us? We are in this thing for almost how many years now, and we are still where we are. And this is the deficit. This is what I'm talking about. If we uh, do this, just intelligence quickly. will be available. Right. Uh, just quickly, time. I I, I just want to be clear. Be there. Yeah. Uh, pardon me. Just to follow up on that, I just want to be clear because. I mean, we have various intelligence agencies. There's DSS, there's even Defense Intelligence, there's National Intelligence Agency. So we're not quite short uh, when it comes to intelligence you know, agencies or apparatus, as it were, in Nigeria. And you would hear that uh, you have intelligence operatives in every local government area. And I even imagine that there should be more, uh, seeing that we're in this situation. So why is it hard or how is it hard to still procure intelligence that's the term usually used when it would seem we have enough intelligence agencies we have as much intelligence operatives and we have this issue on our hands is it a problem with local intelligence connecting that intelligence you know apparatus to the people to procure that intelligence is that where the problem is as well I'll tell you basic things in intelligence, you, in intelligence gathering, let me use just two basic. There are human, who means human intelligence. In other words, you look for contacts, you look for you look for informants, you know, that are bound everywhere. Okay, and the other one is uh, is technology, like I said. Now, let me take a human intelligence. And you know the objective of terrorism is to is to frighten the people to a level that they can no longer even cooperate with the government. Right now, it is even difficult to penetrate those organizations. I was in service when Metesine was, uh, I mean, Ravik Kaduna, and it did not take us time. Within, uh, within uh, uh, two, three months, they were rooted out. Why? Because it was easy for us, easy for us to get uh, 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 contacts, even within the organization. And Nigerians are not being frightened to a level that they cannot give information. As it is today, people are afraid. People are not, uh, you know, taking looking at that aspect. So our best bet mostly is technology, and it's that technology that is in short supply. But lastly, how much there are some of these operations that you need authority authorization before you carry it out. Just like uh, we have been saying, we know where they are. We discuss with them. So in fact, it's not intelligence that is in short supply. Uh, if I will say, I think it's the, it's the willpower to do the needful. Like uh, one of the governors said, if we have to go to the forest, let it be simultaneous across uh, the, 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 the states that we know that they are. Do we have the personnel? Do we have the resource? Do we have the, the, the armament? Do we have the capacity to, to carry out that uh, simultaneous operation that will deal with these people? You and I know that it's not even feasible now because the men are not there. Those are the kind of things that we are talking about.
You know, some people, much as the, the Kaduna train attack was such an outrage, I mean, it was such a, a, a terrible tragedy, um, some people will talk about how, you know, that has brought some attention to the people who have now been abducted. So the, the likelihood of them being returned uh, could, could be far higher than, say, another community, the community where we've just uh, uh, seen the reports before we came to this discussion, uh, somewhere on the outskirts of Kaduna, where people were abducted as well. Some people were killed and some people were abducted. The chances of those people being recovered are very slim. Uh, we've seen on a daily basis how people who are abducted are left, you know, their families are left to their own devices in terms of how they recover the uh, re recover their own loved ones. And and there are questions as to, you know, questions as to whether or not the state is beginning to give up on kidnappers. So apart from this landmark abduct abduction, such as the one that happened on the train. Um, other kidnappings, it would seem that citizens are left largely, or the families of those who are abducted are left largely to their own devices. If you're able to pay ransom, fine. If you're not able to pay ransom, then your loved one can continue to remain in the hands of the abductors. It looks like that's the sort of helpless situation we found ourselves. Um, uh, have you come to this conclusion as well, or do you think that there is something that is happening behind the scenes which we are not seeing? I don't think um, I don't think there is anything happening behind the scene. What is happening is the is the, the the terrorists or the kidnappers. They have seen our own um, uh, shortcomings. Shortcomings first uh, um, uh, everywhere. We don't have the outbreak. Look at that part of Kaduna, the last one you're talking about. Uh, you don't expect what you, you don't have, you can't give it out. Ordinarily, with the level of um, uh, the frequency of attacks in Kaduna, most of these communities by now should have uh, uh, security operatives standing by, you know, not from fire that they can easily respond to threats and things like that. Uh, but if they don't have that number of uh, personnel, how many places do you expect them to, to, to you know, deploy people? In, in, if you look at Kaduna, somebody was listing the various uh, institutions, you know, that are there. Don't forget that after the attack uh, at NDA, they do you know, because uh, most of those institutions are training institutions, but they needed to provide, you know, security, you know, for their own uh, um, institutions. So. If, if if government government has taken a policy um, and I think uh, rightly too that uh, they are not going to pay ransom and so if government has no capacity to provide security everywhere for people and your people are kidnapped and certainly you would not like to keep your people I mean your your your, your loved ones in their in their in their you know in their detention you will certainly find a way of sorting it out but like I said. Nigeria should believe that we are at war. And if we are at war, we should uh, make sure we, what is there for us now is massive resources in acquiring everything that we needed to, we need to acquire personnel, recruitment and training immediately as it is usually done during the war. And then in the area of equipment, somebody said, uh, some of these countries may not want to even sell the equipment to us. Let's go to another country. We are not supposed to be tied to one country. So, I mean, we should, we should do that faster. It's all these delays over the years that have brought us where we are. And we should try as much as possible to avoid bureaucracy in the current situation that we find ourselves. I'd like uh, Colonel Diary to also weigh in on this discussion uh, in terms of um, the helplessness that we found ourselves. Uh, it is very worrisome indeed. I mean, reading the top the, 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 the uh, top of the nameplate of the Abuja Inquirer this morning and, uh, you know, the story saying that uh, the, fam the abductors who had taken an Abuja chief were telling his family members to sell his house so that he could raise the 20 million naira or so that they had demanded to release him. People are selling all that they have uh, when they are kidnapped. Um, and I know that the state continues to say, security agencies continue to say that, you know, people shouldn't 
give ransom to kidnappers because it continues to fuel it. But when you look at the capacity that our state apparatus have, you know, exhibited in terms of being able to rescue these people back, it leaves a lot to be desired. Families look like they're left with no other option than to, you know, submit to the will of these abductors. Is it a trend that worries you? Thank you, Mark. Uh, honestly, it is most worrisome. I, I really don't understand. Because sometimes, if you go and make this report, you end up even regretting. So what most people do, it happens on a daily basis. Even here in Lagos, there's nowhere that is free. People just arrange and they pay the ransom. And that shouldn't be at all. That shouldn't be. Just like um, Mr. Abu said, there is a deficit in our intelligence. In all facets of our intelligence, there is a deficit. Because it's common knowledge. We know the numbers. They are not just there. When you look on the streets, at least within two, three hundred meters, you should see a law enforcement agent there, such that if you are in danger, it gives you that first psychological relief, you know. But when you look around, there's no one in sight. And even sometimes when you make calls, someone sits down at the desk there asking you some very, very, very unreasonable question when you are in distress. I mean, that shouldn't be. So as far as I'm concerned, we know where these people are. You hear them. They should be rooted out. There should be a coordinated approach to it. It's not a situation whereby we take it in isolation. You, ha you have crisis in Kaduna, you are facing Kaduna. By the time you root out these people from Kaduna, they have, they have moved to Plateau. By the time you chase them to Plateau, they have moved you know, to, to Zamfara or Nasarawa or, na or another neighborhood. So there should be, you know, uh, 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 what, I, what I would call uh, 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 a coordinated approach so that there will be effects. Okay, Kanandari, I'm going to ask you to hold your thoughts. We'll, we will focus a little more on the, situa on the solutions when we come back from this break. I know you're talking about how uh, you know, the state should do something about it, but we'll ask what citizens on their own part can do as well. In just a moment, please stay with us. We're still talking security here on Sunrise Daily and Colonel Yomi Dari, a former army officer, and Mr. Adam Zabu, former assistant director of internal security at the DSS, our guests this morning. Just before we went on break, we're talking about um, intervening in cases of kidnapping, whether citizens are on their own and you know, whether there's nothing we can do about the helplessness that citizens currently feel. So... Uh, Kanadari, you're talking about how we need to undertake a simultaneous, um, you know, military operation, it will seem, or security operation, if you like, um, around the state of the Northwest to be able to do something about these uh, kidnappers. I know that the governor of the state, uh, Governor Nasir Arifad, as governor of Kaduna State, has spoken severally about, you know, carrying out such a simultaneous attack. And I know that before now, I think uh, in 2016, 2017, he talked about an operation that was highly successful um, a, around the forests of uh, Kaduna, uh, bordering Zamfara, bordering a number of uh, northwestern states. He did say that there was that collaboration there and lamented the fact that uh, you know, that collaboration seems to be on the back foot now. Uh, but there are questions, because I'm wondering, because he said that they, they were, the governors were able to muster the resources to fund the military to carry out such an operation. So I wonder, is it that there, is no fun, is it that there are no funds? Because over and over again, the president has given 
his directive uh, to the military chiefs. And I imagine that if the president has given uh, the, the, the directive and it's a matter of funding, uh, it, it should be that, you know, they could present that to him and carry out this operation, especially if there is proof that having carried out such an operation in the past was able to solve a particular problem. Why is it that we are unable to, whether or not with the funding of the governors, carry out such uh, an operation again? Well, um, it's, it's, it's a big puzzle uh, because as we speak, the armed forces are being funded, you know, uh, and uh, with all the funds, what are we seeing? The problem, as far as I'm concerned, is hydra-headed. It's hydra-headed because insecurity cuts across. When the funds don't really reach or are not used for what they are meant for. And of course, that brings us to the issue of corruption. Because when there's so much corruption, there's lack of accountability. We, have, we found ourselves in a situation whereby people just help themselves and they get away with it. Hence, you now have issues of cultism again. You now have issues of the young ones, everybody looking, looking to how to get rich quick. Values are lost. Yes, there's need for us, like we've always said on this pl platform, that look, who is afraid of state policing? It's high time we stop playing the hostage. Let's have state police for crying out loud. As far as I'm concerned, the reason against state police is more of politics than reality. But Nigeria, we are crying now, begging for the soul of this country to be salvaged in the hands of the wicked ones. So why can't we just have state police? Because this, our, our problem is really lo is, is localized. the opportunity. I mean, you have talked about this monster being a hydra-headed monster. Uh, which one of the heads will you attack? And I can see as you're presenting the issues that it just keeps expanding and looks really complex. But which one of the levels would you tackle first? Or which one of the heads will you tackle first? I said in my opening uh, 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 remark here that, look, it's high time we have leaders now been honorable enough to resign when they cannot perform. And if they refuse to resign, they should be shown the way out. For crying out loud, Nigeria lost to Ghana in a football match, just a football match. And you saw the way the people reacted. So why can't the people go out and react against people who are retrogressing our progress in this country? Some people don't really have a business, just like Mr. Abu said. Some people don't even have a business about security. But when it comes to dishing out the money, managing the money, it comes to their table. That shouldn't be it. That shouldn't be it at all. So you seem to have put this failure uh, at the table of uh, management at the top level, and you think there should be repercussions for Absolutely. That. Uh, so you, you talked about... Um, a simultaneous bombardment, and yeah. I just want to take you up on that before I take you to Mr. Abu. Yeah. Do we know for a fact that these attacks across states, whether in the northwest, north central, northeast, and even the parts of the south, are related? Because, I mean, uh, I think you, you talked about when they are attacked in one place, they move to another place, keep being displaced. Are they really related? So we have a Kaduna Abuja train attack, we've had a killing in Plateau State just over the weekend, we've had attacks as well in Niger and other states, are they indeed related? Because it's important to delineate, so we know what we're dealing with here. I believe they are related. These people work in cells, and they are coordinated. They are coordinated. And of course, we know they have foreign supports too. 
So what stops us? i give you an example. Look at the Kaduna incident. They've had intelligence about it. But just because of selfish personal interest, because of greed, nothing was done. Nothing was done. And as I speak with you... On the path of who, please? Um, on the selfishness, the greed, on the path of who? On the, on the part of the, the agents or agencies that are responsible for the management of, 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 for example, for the Nigerian railways, right from the top to the bottom, as far How as I'm mean? concerned. Sorry? How do you mean? Coyote, you've had people come over the national television to talk about, you know, they're getting information and then, you know, uh, a box shifting, blame, you know, blaming one, you know, uh, I mean, uh, uh, body or the other. That shouldn't be it. What stops us, even the strains that we have, what stops, us, what stops us from ordering trains, you know, that have a, 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 a technology, security equipment? I mean, that's the least you can do. All these trains should have CCTV cameras embedded in them. Well, I, I think the NRCMD spoke about CCTVs in the train, and he said that they will go download it. But I think the challenge was on the rail tracks itself. Even, even, even the rail tracks. Tracks. What stops us from having the, the kind of train that we have, like sweepers? It, it goes back to the issue we raised earlier with yes. you and Mr. Abu about uh, the failure of intelligence or a lack of intelligence, for which reason we also asked the question whether or not we had a deficit, <coughs> excuse me, in terms of, in, of intelligence. Mr. Abu, we, we, uh, it's only when things like this happen that we raise all the issues. And I'll be honest with you, it, is, it gets really frustrating for, for many Nigerians. Earlier, we, we saw a report where in Kaduna State, people are living in perpetual fear because they go into their homes to abduct them, to pick them. And it's not only in Kaduna State that this is happening. You also saw, and of course, my, my colleague, Mark, where re-emphasized it the other time, talking about a man that was abducted in Abuja. And so it is not because we don't know that these things are happening or will happen. So what have we been failing to do? The scare on the front pages of the papers is also that, look, these things may not end unless we do some things. We shouldn't wait for another tragedy before we get ahead of the issue. So what are we failing to do? Uh, in, uh, that's making much. all of these things happen. Thank you very much for this particular question. I've been uh, longing for it. We have failed to do many things in the past and even now. In 2012, IIP has organized an annual conference. We call it ISCA. I was the lead speaker. And in that conference, I told them from my experience that in the first place, funding of uh, national security agencies should not be left for the federal government alone. That the national assemblies will look at it and, and uh, provide a law that will appropriate funding and provision of infrastructure across the three tiers of government. And I gave a typical example. If a local government chairman gives the GPO 50,000 Naira to, to repair or buy fuel for an operational vehicle, he thinks he's doing him favor. I mean, because there is no statutory provision for him to do so. And when people are talking about the governors have, uh, have um, a security vote and all the like, how much is this? Maybe about one billion and so on and so forth. That is not up to what we are talking about. Over the years, we have not been doing what we are supposed to be doing in the area of funding. And I told you before that all the security, you, you, you talked about um, a, a simultaneous operation across maybe the northeast, northwest. You know, what do you use in that simultaneous operation? Is it not personnel? It will you move all the security personnel from other parts of the country? And when you want to carry out this kind of operation, like what they did when they gave uh, amnesty to uh, the, the, these uh, uh, south-south um, agitators that time, uh, uh, militants, and I told them that it was a faulty 
you know, uh, policy. And they say, why? I said, how do you ever believe that they will give you all the arms that they have? And if we are going to do that, why will it not be simultaneous? So if we are going to carry out this kind of operation, it is not only the areas that we have current situation. It even other areas, because if you start there, they will even move in into those places. And whether you like it or not, even the operation that took place in uh, Zabara, they will have moved into other states southward, whether we like it or not, or other part of the North Central that they were not before. So we we must we must agree to do the right thing it's not a question when there's an attack we begin to we begin to we begin to uh, you know uh, run here hold meetings and things like that but and mr abu can, can we can we get ahead of them uh, take a look at these two quotes let's start with this one by uh, uh, you know a cleric pastor adeboye who is asking the question uh, for so many so many things on my mind most especially the attacks on kaduna why kaduna who is trying to isolate kaduna and why and after kaduna which state is next that's an intelligence information for instance but it would seem like mr ejofo your former colleague was responding to him when he says Taking Kaduna, where we have several military formations, is strategic to them. If they can overrun Kaduna and environs and other areas, other areas that do not have military installations like Kaduna become an easy ride for them. This, I, I, it, it would seem like, and of course we know the things that have happened, the NDA and a number of other institutions, you know, like that are in Kaduna. So it is not because we do not have capacity in Kaduna State, for instance. It's just because we haven't done some things that ought to be done. With the uh, uh, military infrastructure that is in Kaduna State, do we need to wait for body language to do the needful and protect ourselves? Thank you very much. Let me go straight to their responses. Why Kaduna? In the first place, why Kaduna? Don't forget that it's this same Kaduna that the governor before told Nigerians that he settled some bandits so that they will not operate again. It's this same Kaduna that the same governor turned back to say that he's no more paying a ransom to anybody and they should go to the forest to kill them. It's this same Kaduna, this same Kaduna state that the, the bandits, uh, I mean the terrorists, have been attacking over the years without any reasonable, uh, I mean, uh, 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 notable response, you know, to neutralize them. I asked myself one day that this uh, group always attacking, attacking. Are they not somewhere? Are they not some? Are they not moving from somewhere? And don't forget that if they are moving from somewhere, it is not the fighting forces that will infiltrate them in that somewhere. The only thing that can infiltrate them is the technology. Do we have that technology? Does they, do they have it? Like I said, our forest management that is still manual, is that supposed to be under, I mean, under the current security challenges? But whether or not, whether or not we like that, and don't forget that these security agencies will not come out to tell you that these are the things we like. Nobody does that anywhere. I, I have not had the CIA telling the American government that uh, we don't have this, we don't have that, or you are not behaving this, we are not behaving that. It's we that are outside that are supposed to be saying, and that should be the truth of, of the situation. And let me let me also add this. Uh, for those that are always attacking, you know, the security forces, they are not doing this, they are not doing that. For me, under the circumstances they, found them, they find themselves, they are doing the best they can afford to do. Because it's their life that's sick. Don't forget that they are the first, in fact, they bear the brunt of the attacks even more than the people. So if we want to face this situation as it is, and I've been saying it, let us believe we are at war. In fact, if possible, declare the state of emergency, and I think it's possible so that we can commit resources in terms of personnel, in terms of equipment, and in terms of the citizenry uh, support for us to look at another one that is coming. Right now, Nigerians don't, don't believe the damage that uh, the, the, the cyber crime is, uh, is, is, is causing to the citizenry and even the government. And uh, in fact, our uh, reputation at the international community, we are not looking at it now until it becomes a thing that we can no longer deal with. Well, Mr. Abu, indeed, an important point you made about the, you know, the cyber crimes angle of the security conversation. But I, I find it quite puzzling when you said that it is not those agencies that would ask for what they need, that it's people outside that would ask for it. If I got you correctly, then what's the point? Are they there to make the government feel good? No, no, that's not what I'm saying. I mean, they, they made their request, but they cannot come out to you and say this is the request we have made. 
they make their requests. And if their requests are not met, they will not come on the media like this and say our requests are not met. Just like I said, why is it that every every police division is not having tracking device? So that we can respond immediately if there is kidnapping, if there is an attack. Why are they not uh, having a tracking device? Okay. For instance, why are we not having technology, GPS-based? I, I, I remember, even if we are talking about this attack, there are, pred I mean, there are predator drones everywhere in the world. It has it not come to a level that we should acquire them? Because okay, let's find out what Colonel Dari thinks about this. Right, Mr. Abu, just a moment. Let's let's find out what Colonel Dari thinks about it. Is this is this problem a problem of technology acquiring and all that? Do you agree that that's the challenge we have here? Well, I I kind of uh, want to beg to the <clears throat> to to defer a little bit from what uh, Mr. Abu has uh, postulated or presented here, because as far as I'm concerned, uh, our monies are budgeted. And, uh, you know, given to these various agencies, the police, the military, you know. And, and um, uh, uh, even these days, you find individuals having drones. Individuals. Children, children sometimes. Yeah, ju even kids, they have drones. So what stops, you know, uh, 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 I mean, uh, the, the, the parastatals or, or the agencies uh, from acquiring those things, okay? And let me just quickly sound a note of warning here. We have to be very, very careful because we've said it here at times without number. Uh, the, 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 the railway, we, a lot of billions of dollars have been invested in this state. A lot of this money are loans that whether we like it or not, we are, we, found we are started paying back. Okay? So, the other time, the rail lines were attacked. Even some, some foreigners were found amongst uh, the people who, are, who, 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 who uh, 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 I think it was on um, the, I don't know, I think it was in, on the Tape axis where they, they removed those rail lines. Okay? That wasn't an attack on the, uh, on, the, on the railway itself. But now we have an attack on the railway. And we should expect more of these things happening. And then the next target is the airport. We shouldn't just sit back. A lot of our airports are porous, so there's need for us right now to step up. The federal government should step up. I, I find it puzzling, Colonel, to think that a group somewhere, either domiciled here or elsewhere, they have operations here, can make the government of Nigeria at different levels seem to be running around in circles. They hit and it seems to disappear into thin air. And, and I, I don't know, I, I know there's, there are things to do before an attack, during an attack and after the attack. but. Are we looking at this well? Who is the greatest beneficiary or who will be the greatest beneficiary of all this chaos? Have we been able to answer that question? Well, that, I, I think that's a difficult question to answer in the circumstance. But one thing I know is that there are people, there are saboteurs, even within the government itself. Okay? So there's need to fish out these fifth columnists is that and, to deal, say, is and my, deal with them. I'm sorry, uh, Colonel Dari. Is that to say that this information that, because I have implicit confidence in, the, I've, I've said this countless times, I have implicit confidence in Nigeria's you know, intelligence community. I, I don't believe that with the resources committed to training them, to preparing them for the jobs that are on their hands, as, as Mr. Abu has said, I don't believe, as Karadi also postulated, that we can be <coughs> overrun without you know, someone knowing about it. So this information that you're giving about, you know, uh, some saboteurs within government, is it that the, this information is not known to government? Is it that the, the heads of the, the head of state, the president, or the governors in each of these states don't know each of these people, and they can't send DSS officials to pick them up and call them what uh, uh, Pastor Laddie Thompson calls persons of interest? Listen, Ayo, mark my words. This country has invested so much in the training of personnel, and we have some of the best heads in the military and in the police forces. So what is holding us from deploying them to do the needful? I want to believe that maybe the willpower is not there. On whose part now? Maybe on the part of the of the government, because we really need to look inwards. 
I'm, and I'm, reappraise I'm, I'm, our I'm, situation. I'm here. sorry, uh, Colonel and uh, Mr. Abu. I'm maybe, maybe I'm just speaking like a, a layman who doesn't know anything. The laws are clear what the job of the military is. The law is clear, uh, Mr. Abu, what the job of the DSS is. The job is clear, the, the law is clear, what the job of the police is. In fact, the, the law says that the job, primary job of the police is to prevent crime, not to fight crime. Ayo, listen here, listen here. What are we talking about? Let's have a situation whereby there's autonomy for even the local government. Let's have a situation whereby we have a state police, we have the local police, such that the funds that are meant for these people reach them to be able to perform their duties. It's not a situation whereby you start giving people handouts. And when you give that man handout, that man believes, just like Abu said, you are doing him a favor, which shouldn't be at all. Uh, and first, he owes some loyalty to you, whether you are doing the right thing or, or not. Uh, you know, Colonel, this state, uh, state police conversation, and I know it can take days to just talk about it because it would seem the governors want state police. It would seem the president doesn't want state police. But don't forget that the National Assembly is made up of representatives from states, and they can champion this cause and say, well, our people, it would seem, want state police. Let us pass it through. And maybe if they don't get the assent of the president, they can do what the constitution says they can do to get that to work. So uh, maybe that, I hope, that I hope speaks we'll get to the to real that. power. Because we've been on this conversation for more 10 years, yes. state police or not, yes. going back and yes. forth. Does this speak to the willpower, political willpower, or do we just say one thing and mean another thing? Well, I think sometimes we say one thing and mean another thing, you know? Because we just are not facing the reality. We are playing the ostrich, and you know the way the ostrich plays. It's game. Everything is outside. So it's high time. Because a lot of things now borders around consensus and what have you. Uh, it's interesting that term <clears throat> comes up. It reminds me of the political dealings we've had in recent times, which some have said may have distracted from the security conversation. But let me take this to Mr. Abu. And um, I, I just want to get your thoughts on this, because we've had this conversation on security almost every day, day in, day out. Se um, solutions are proffered. Security consultants sometimes tell you, we have said enough. I, I wonder, do you think that we're at a point where maybe it looks like we're coming to accept these insecurity, you know, situations as our new norm, where we're just trying to live with it rather than get rid of it? We must, we must, let me go straight. We must never accept that this is a new norm. I mean, how can one accept when farmers cannot go to the farm, you cannot do business, sometimes the whole town is shut down. Look at that community in Kaduna. Will anything be going on there? It's not something for us to accept, but it's something for those, I mean, to do, who are supposed to do what they are supposed to do so that we can have uh, adequate security. There is no, there is no dance, I mean, there is no shortcut now that we are at war and we should face that war to fight it. And like I said before, and I want to repeat it, that first and foremost, let us begin to do what we are supposed to do when a nation is at war. Mass recruitment, provision, and adequate resources for security forces. And then the, 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 my colleague talks, he said something about, uh, he believes that our government is giving them enough money to buy this, to buy that. If you have given them, if, if you think if government are giving them that kind of money and they are not buying them, government would have to complain. Government would have find a way of reacting. So I want to believe that, uh, they, they don't have the adequate resources. It is time for us to give them adequate resources, I mean, to provide adequate resources. And then do enough of them. Um, let us have, you know, let us be strategic. Okay, Mr. Abu, I mean, it's not, in it's terms not, of the things that you have raised just now, I mean, we need to wrap up yeah. in, in the next 60 yeah. seconds or thereabout. Do you okay. see, <laughs> excuse me, do you see an end in sight to insecurity in this country within the shortest possible time. If you do, within how many uh, days, weeks, months, or years from now? In the next one year, if we, provide, if we do the needful, and recruit the law personnel, give them adequate training, provide adequate resources, especially technology, and then the citizenry, 
to know that this is war and all of us will fight it together. If you look at the successes recorded in the Northeast, it is as a result of the support of the, I mean, uh, the, the, the uh, civilian, uh, you know, JTF. Various communities will have their civilian JTF to support the security forces in this war that we are in. If we don't do this, honestly, it might take longer, but within a year, we can make a great impact that people can go to farm. And then, and apart from this, again, there must be policy of providing, providing, I mean, you see the level of the economy, the political leadership. We, we need to wrap up now, Mr. Abu. We need to be, we, we need to wrap up. I, I know that you know, the passion is very high on that one. Same question, Mr. Colonel Yomidare, to you. Do you see an end in sight within the shortest possible time and under what circumstance? 30 seconds. Well, for me, uh, not in the shortest uh, possible time. Uh, I think it's, it has to be a long-term thing. But what we need to do immediately, we need to focus on awareness. There should be intensive awareness. Okay? Like I said, uh, sometimes when we have this issue... Awareness of, by whom to whom? Uh, by, by, by the government. By the government and the people. For example, when we had the BRT issue here where the poor girl was uh, murdered, you know, in all the buses, it should be written boldly, okay? Emergency numbers to contact, okay? At all bus stops, you should have it displayed, emergency numbers oh, to contact. And right. then, of course, we should have monitoring uh, uh, units, real-life monitoring uh, 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 rooms. They call them uh, control rooms. Or situation rooms. Yes, control right. situation rooms. Yeah. And they're real time recording. And even here, all the various uh, media houses, even here in channels, you should have a control room monitoring some of these. Well, Colonel Dari, clearly that's another sphere that we need to explore what yes. should be done yes. before and even during the attack. Yes. Because some of these emergency numbers, you don't even know them. You have to dial the 0803 11 digits when you can actually have three digits. But we'd like to thank you so much for your thank interventions, you. uh, Colonel Yomidari, former Army officer, as well as Mr. Adam Zabu, former Assistant Director Internal Security at the DSS, a fellow International Institute of Professional Security and Security and Intelligence Consultant. Thank you so much, uh, gentlemen, for your time this morning. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. It's my pleasure. Well, as you have said, we can't give up on these issues, and that's exactly what we'll do. When we return in a moment, so please stay with us.